Hello everyone, far and further here. And probably adventuring again. And we are now in the dunes, which you found out on the satellite. Yeah, it turns out Seuss Massa actually has dunes. You don't have to go all the way to Marzuga for them. And I, to be honest, I think there are better dunes than in Marzuga because you have sea on one side and you have mountains on the other side and here you have the proper dunes. And it's not 40 degrees right now. Yes. <laughs> so we came here um, for a sand riding, didn't we? Yes. Uh, we should probably start with the bike setup. So what did you do before you hit the sand yesterday? Um, so probably the biggest thing what for me was the tire pressure. So I have tube tires, so I could go a relatively low pre tire pressure. And before I started the trip, I actually added rim locks. So I could have even lower tire pressure. If you have a big ADV bike, you probably don't have the option for rim locks. But if you have something more like a dual sport like this, you do. That means you could have a very low tire pressure. Mine is single digit right now. Really? Single digit? I think so. It's low ooh, enough ooh. that my uh, tire pressure gauge won't read it. So, but what about you? you? You don't have those things. No, I don't have those things. I don't have tubes. I don't have rim locks and I have a big ADV bike. And uh, that means uh, that I don't really care about tire pressure because it doesn't really help. Uh, the reason being mainly is because with my Tublex Autex kit, I cannot go lower than 18 or 19. I mean, I probably could risk it, but I don't want to. I'm basically running it on 20 and that's it. And in terms of bike safety and keeping your bike running after you've gone through the sand, it's very important your air filter as well. I got in trouble last time because the boot on my air box was slightly loose, but you could also get in a lot of trouble if you have an uh, air filter that's not on correctly, if yeah. it's not oiled properly, all those. So just double check, make sure that you're going to have nice clean air coming through and not sand into your engine. In terms of bike setup, I would like to give a shout out to Chris Burge. He had the podcast and he talks about what um, the different position of forks and the handlebars and all that, how that influences riding in the sand. I haven't changed it yet because I'm trying to just stay upright at this stage. Okay, so how is riding in sand different from riding in other types of terrain? <laughs> um, well, sand is really soft and makes your bike kind of A, lose shitloads of power and B, very, very wobbly. Yeah. So how do I deal with each of those things? Okay. So in terms of uh, how to be stable uh, during the sand, what I do is I put my weight and my bum all the way to the back as far as I can and I kind of like do this kind of thing yeah. uh, even um, and that's because I'm moving the weight onto the rear wheel and I'm making the front wheel lighter and the front wheel will do in sand anything it wants so what do you want you just want to kind of hang on onto the bike and literally ride on a rear wheel basically, yeah. isn't it? So the front can float over, where if I were riding a regular terrain, I would not be sat like this. I would be sat much more upright, especially going uphill like this as stands right now. Yeah. So it's it's very different riding position. Yeah, because, yeah, I don't really change this position when I'm riding on a sand. If I go up the dune, I'm, I'm constantly the same way. I, it's not like on a hard packed terrain where you change the position much. Yeah. And about the sapping the power, what do you do? Just give it more power. <laughs> now, the thing is, the biggest problem with the sand I have is the start. So you have a zero and you need to get to some point where the bike starts to feel stable. With the Tenere, what I found that about 20 kilometers per hour, with a good balance and all that, I can do slow speed uh, sand riding. But if I'm riding on the dunes or if there is a, a, a longer stretch, which I can like, give it the more, about 50 is where the bike starts to really float over the sand and I just can... Yeah, I find that I have to be probably around 20 uh, kph. I'm not entirely sure because my speedo <laughs> broke, um, so I'm guessing here. Uh, definitely my, my natural tendency with difficult terrain is to go a bit slower and more careful, so I have to um, go a lot faster than I might do in other types of terrain. Um, for this bike, I want to be in second 
and because this bike has relatively low power, this bike only has 32 horsepower on a good day, um, when I'm in second, I'm just revving the heck out of it to keep going because otherwise the, the way the sand saps your power, I'll just bog down and get stuck yeah. immediately. So let's talk about what, which gear you start from zero, which, how you start, what do you do? Um, so I've just switched to trying to start in second. Um, obviously it takes a bit more clutch to be starting in second than starting in first. Oh, but, that's interesting. Um, because you want to be in that second gear and you want to be up on the pegs so quickly, it kind of eliminates that whole start in first, have to shift, have to get up kind of yeah. thing going on and you're right where you want to be much more quickly. Yeah. So what I do is that I basically use sand as a clutch. I have a clutch in, I gun it in a second and I drop the clutch and I hope that I'm not gonna dig in, but I just gonna start moving and picking up the momentum and I try to uh, stand as quickly as I can. That's my strategy really. Okay, so just to recap, what are the most important things? Body position in the back, on the pegs, keep the balance. Don't be scared and go fast because without that, it's going to be pure struggle. I'm not using clutch. I'm not using brakes, the front brake. The, if you want to stop, stop with the rear brake and it stops very quickly because it digs in. So for people that have maybe ridden on the beach or ridden on a sandy track and they want to go start to try some dune riding like what we have right here, yeah. um, what's important for them to know? Well. The thing is that the dunes are, and the sand and the desert is different in the different places. There are soft patches, there are hard patches, there are hidden dips because sometimes you cannot see when it actually ends or all that. And that's all kind of good to know before you head into it. <laughs> Otherwise you end up sending yourself off a sand dune the way I did back in the Black Desert. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> And what we have been doing now here is that we basically stop uh, after one section and then we try to walk and find our route. And if you had a bike that was really well set up for the sand, if you had um, a 500cc KTM with knobbly tires that weighs about 130 kilograms, this advice would probably be entirely different. But we yeah. have bikes that are in different ways, not very suited for sand. Mine is very underpowered for its weight. Um, the Tenere is just really heavy. We have 50-50 dual sport tires on, so um, we have luggage. So it's, it's a very different thing. And so you have to, the planning element of your route is a lot more important. Yeah, yeah. Don't underestimate the desert. Uh, we have done it a few times and it bites back. What did you struggle with? Um, so the thing I probably struggle with the most is losing the momentum. I'm not the fastest rider in general. My bike isn't very powerful. So especially when I'm in situations where I lose momentum, where it's maybe slightly more difficult, like rutted tracks or mm. there's a lot of bushes or other obstacles like that. Once I get through that and if I struggle, I lose the momentum, I get stuck. It's very hard for me to get up to that magic 20, 30 kph speed where it becomes stable again. So once I lose it, I kind of, I, I, it's, it's a bit of a death spiral for me, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I have had the biggest problems uh, here with turning. Yeah. What happens is in the sand, everything is like really kind of slow. The sharp turn is really difficult because for the sharp turn, you would lose a lot of momentum. So what you do is you do these big loops and that's what works. Also steering with the front wheel doesn't work for me at all. It's mm. all about the weight. And uh, I fail quite often on that one. So quite often happens this uh, parking. We call it glamorously parking, but usually it's called get stuck. <laughs> and uh, what to do, how to get unstuck? Well, we use two techniques, don't we? You just drop the bike, fill up the hole, and you try it again. Okay.
And another method to get unstuck is just drop it, drop it, drag it around down the hill. Happy days. We made it out. Well, we have the last 10 meters. <laughs> One of the, my big mistakes was that as you go over the dune, uh, the section behind the dune is soft and I basically digged in with my front wheel. Uh, that was a disaster. Any other important lessons to finish off? I think if you're uh, on a road and see there's patches of sand, which you encounter in a lot of places in Tajikistan and Kazakhstan and so forth, you shouldn't be afraid of a little bit of sand. No. But if you're going to be tackling a whole lot of sand, you really have to respect it. You have to be um, somewhat capable of riding your bike and it's really good to have a friend yeah. because it's very easy to get yourself in trouble in sand. Indeed, indeed. Especially, you know, traveling with the luggage, with a big bike, you know, small sections, bap, 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 easy. Yeah, but yeah. we have now done what? Three, four, five kilometers in almost half a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's gone now. <laughs>